Hi, this is Stan from Urban Survivalists. I'm going to give you an update on our water filtration system and the uh, rainwater collection system since we haven't talked about it for a while and we haven't been posting, just so everybody knows where we're at. So we're going to start with the rainwater collection system, which is where the whole process starts. Uh, we have the barrels here now connected with the nice connections, much firmer than our previous attempts. Uh, this is still the same, but it doesn't seem to be leaking, so we're not really too worried about it. We've got the new rain sand filter. You can see the little sand thing and the rock to keep it from digging a hole as it comes out of this pipe here. Uh, a couple of the improvements we've made. We have the first flush system. There's a little hole down there in the bottom of that one, though it does take a, a lot of maintenance to keep it clear. Water comes off the roof, goes down the gutter, into the first flush system. This thing fills up till it gets to right here, and then it overflows and goes into our sand filter. Sand filter goes down through two pipes to the very bottom, fills up, fills the three barrels. They're all three connected together, and they all three have drain spouts at the top so they can't overflow. Here we have the float switch that uh, we detailed the construction of earlier. It controls how long we can pull water out of these. We don't want to be running the pumps dry for too long. We're going to go inside now and show you the system in action. So uh, here's the the system, we plug it into the wall. We got our three pre filters, comes up here to the main action carbon filter. Uh, not actually sure what that one is. <laughs> then we have the, uh, the actual membrane RO system right here. One of the uh, big innovations we worked on was connecting a pressure vessel before it goes into the RO system to keep the pump from oscillating on and off too fast. Uh, you only have a certain number of life cycles on these switches on these pumps right here and we didn't want to uh, burn it out prematurely as it's one of the most expensive pieces of the system. We have the clean water flow switch here. comes up across these wires over here down into the control box. This nice little green LED telling us everything's good. Uh, we have the uh, one of the fuses right here. There's another one right here, and there's a couple in the uh, electronics box. So what this does is we have the, uh, the hose coming from the outside that we saw. Uh, this goes to the float switch, a dirty close. Uh, goes out the, the wall here. You can't see it, but it goes down and out through the dryer vent. So water comes in, gets pumped through, goes into the pressure vessel, hits this three-way, comes up, goes through here, into the intake, through the three pre-filters, out of the pre-filter, up here to the switch, goes in through this one, through this one, or uh, um, in through here, out goes through the RO system, comes in through this one, goes through this to take out the uh, whatever other little critters might be in there, through this one, out here, and to this, which is the top connection, goes up through the hose, and down into the barrel. We just today did a complete water change on our three tanks. Uh, we used the all 55 gallons and it rained here recently. So we got to turn the system on and let it just run until it fills up again uh, from the three barrels outside. We have a, a cumulative 180 gallons of rainwater storage out here that we can draw from and that's plenty to fill up the clean water tank on the inside. Some of the improvements we want to use on our next system that we're going to detail the build on eventually are on-demand water filtration. We realize most people don't have as much storage room as we have, so we're going to work on 
creating a system that will filter the water as they need it much faster. The system we have now, it trickles it. We get about, I think it's a point two one gallons per minute through the uh, RO membrane and uh, actually much more than that through the uh, the dirty water offtake. So what you end up doing to increase your on-demand water, clean water filtration capacity is to cascade your uh, RO filters, the membranes, one after the other. Uh, if each membrane gets, say, 0.2 gallons per minute, uh, you cascade three of them and you get 0.6 gallons per minute. So that's actually a much more efficient way of doing it. And the filters don't actually cost that much, including the housing. It's probably $50 per membrane. So what we'll end up doing is uh, trying a slightly different configuration, getting rid of uh, some of the electronics, which were a little bit fiddly, and make the whole system uh, run off of the pressure switches that are already built into the pumps since that seems to be a, a really efficient system. Uh, well, it'll also end up getting rid of the clean water barrel inside because you'll be able to filter the water on on demand as you need it. So that takes away another component of the system and uh, it just drastically you know, simplifies the entire setup. So that's what we have going and that's the working RO system and rainwater collection system right now. Uh, see you guys next week.